want to know what is cost, cost object, cost center, cost unit, or about the classification of the cost, continue till end of the video. In this video, we will cover the basic introduction to the cost, cost unit, cost center, cost object, and a basic introduction to the cost classification. This video is an introduction to all of them, but the more detailed videos will be added to this playlist and to the description, as well as if you would like to know more about the fine variances between financial accounting and management accounting, it's at the top. You can click and understand more about that. Let's start our study. First of all, what is cost? The amount or equivalent in monetary value paid to acquire, produce, or maintain anything is called cost. This is the amount I have paid to purchase my computer. That's the cost I have paid. Or in other words, a cost is a measurement in financial terms, again in monetary value, of the amount of resources, it can be material, labor, or etc., consumed for a specific purpose. I have spent this much material, $100 material and $200 labor to produce my computer. That's the amount I have spent to produce my computer. That's the cost. Remember one point before all. All expenses are cost, but the, all costs are not expenses. You're spending for the rent. That's something you're spending, and that's the same time the cost. But when, whenever you are incurring a capital expenditure, like you purchased your computer, it will take time that you depreciate that and it will be changed to the expense of what it have generated the income for you. So all the costs are not expenses. What's cost unit? Cost unit is a unit of product or service to which cost can be allocated. You need to find out a unit like a computer, a book, a building, or whatsoever, that you allocate your cost to that. How much does it cost that you study mathematics? How much does it cost that you produce a mobile? So a cost unit is whatsoever you can allocate the cost to that. It can be a single unit. It can be a batch, batch of three units that you produced together. It can be a job, specific job you are working on that, specific order I have received. It can be a specific contract, contract of construction of a building. It can be composite as well. It can be combination of two single units, three single units together. An example for that can be a hospital. You can say the number of patients, but different patients will stay in hospital for various or different periods. So if we want to be specific and more concise about that, it's better to say one bed, one patient, like a patient bed or a patient night, like per night of a patient being or stayed at the hospital. That's a composition of two or three single units coming together and making a cost unit for which you can allocate the cost to that. What are responsibility centers? A responsibility center is a functional entity within a business. That's a functional part. It can be a department. It can be a unit. Basically, it has been divided in four parts based on their criteria. It can be cost center, it can be revenue center, it can be profit center, it can be investment center. Cost center is a center 
which the main focus is on its cost. If there is no revenue or the portion of revenue it generates is so low, such as maintenance department. Maintenance department main task is to maintain the factory, maintain the machinery. So they are spending. And the best way to measure their work and the measure measure the work or performance of the manager is to assign the benchmark or criteria based on the level of cost and measure based on the level of cost. Another one is revenue center. Revenue center is a center which the major part of their activity or the main point of their activity is to generate revenue, such as sales department. We can assign the level of benchmark for them to measure their performance of the level of revenue they can generate in a period. And their managed performance as well can be considered against the level of the revenue has been generated in his trade in his unit. Another one is profit center. Profit center is a center which can generate both revenue and expense. So as the result of that, we will measure the level of profit that the unit can produce. Suppose there is a, a branch which is able to generate some revenue and incur some expenses. At the end of the day, we will consider what is the amount of the profit and we will measure the performance of that unit and his responsible manager by the level of the profit they have produced. If we go a little bit advanced in modern days, we have some investment centers. Investment centers are responsible for their revenue, expense, and the profit generated, but plus the capability to reinvest that profit or even receive some, some fund and reinvest that. That's why the performance measurement will be done based on the level or amount of the output they will receive against the investment they are doing. So, the examples can be Rocky or Roy that we will study in future videos in detail. Next one, what is cost object? The basic about cost object. A cost object is often a product or a department, even a territory, for which costs are accumulated or measured. So, it can be a product, it can be a customer, a machine, a group of machines, group of employees, a territory, a department, whatsoever. For which costs are accumulated or can be traced or can be measured. Suppose a product. You can say the direct material, direct labor and manufacturing costs of that product is that much. Or you can say for the maintenance department. The cost of employees and maintenance supplies for this department this much. The advertisement expense for this territory is this much. These are a way that you can accumulate or measure the cost against them. That's why it's called cost object. Let's come to the point. What is the difference between cost object and a cost unit? Think of cost object a, a wider area, that under that, if we go broader, we will have the centers, like cost center, revenue center, profit center, and investment center. But if we go narrow, we can allocate the cost to a unit, which is a unit of product, a unit of a service. So for the broader area, we can allocate a cost to a branch. It can be investment center. For the smaller area, we can redistribute that cost allocated to a branch to a unit of product it can produce. That's the difference between the cost object and cost unit. What is cost driver? A cost driver is a factor that drives the cost of the activity. It is the root cause of why a particular cost anchored. In simple words, what will drive the cost. What is the cause for a cost that is incurred? An example can be number of maintenance drives the maintenance cost. Suppose my, my factory need 
five time maintenance service to be incurred. For each maintenance, of course, there will be a cost. So the number of maintenance is the driver of maintenance cost for the period. That's why it's called the driver of the cost or cost driver. A question will arise that much information, cost unit, cost object, cost center, and whatsoever. Why we need this cost information? Cost information is needed to aid price setting, decision making, planning and budgeting, control and reporting. That's a basic introduction to that. But for more detail, here at the book, we have a link which will explain why we need management information or cost information and what is the purpose and how we can allocate to make it very based information to the management, which is useful for them. But in basic term, the cost information will help your manager or the management of the company, board of directors, to make decisions. They focus about the future. They make some planning. They report. They control the performance. But for the basic review, cost information will aid the management top management of the company, board of directors, to set directions, to make plans, to forecast about the future, and to control the level of activity now, or control the implementation of previous plans. What are the different type of cost classification? Let's come to the classification of cost. There are various methods by which the cost is divided. Some of the companies will go by elements, some will go by nature, by function of that cost, and by behavior of that cost. Cost classification is the process of grouping costs according to their common features and characteristics. So by a specific characteristics that some costs have, they bring it together in one group or one part. Let's go in detail. What are the costs by elements? Cost classification by elements. Basically, we have divided the cost in three areas based on elements. It can be material cost, the raw material, or the material I have used to produce a television. The cost of the labor who worked on production of that television, and some extra other expenses which is incurred during the production, such as the electricity, heating, rent, and whatsoever is spent on that. But by nature, the cost is mainly divided in two parts. We have the direct cost, we have indirect cost. Direct cost are the cost which is very easily traceable to a product. You can find it out how much is directly spent on that product, or it's much more visible in, in simple words. But indirect costs are not that much traceable to a product, and that's not clear how you can allocate that. So it will go based on estimation. Direct cost can be explained in different types. It can be material, it can be labor it can be expensive so we can have direct material we can have direct labor who directly worked on the production of television it can be direct expense such as royalties which in each unit of that television i have produced i have paid some royalty to the inventor or for the patent of that product that television so we have some indirect costs like indirect material cost which is which can be a glue indirect labor cost which can be a supervisor of my two or three lines of production which i cannot directly trace it to a product it can be indirect expenses which is rent expense the whole factory have 10 lines of production and it is not easily traceable that you allocate the electricity expense to each unit. Let's go cost classification by function.
By function, the cost is also divided in many categories. It can be production of factory costs, the cost which is incurred in the factory of the business. It can be administration costs, the cost which is incurred in admin or operation side of the business, the cost which you are incurring for the marketing, sales and distribution of your products to other territories or other areas. It can be the research and development cost, the cost which is incurred for research to develop and make inventions to increase the capacity of your product, to increase the quality of your product, or to decrease the cost of your product, whatsoever you are spending on research and development. These are by functions which the cost is classified. And at the end, we have the cost classification by behavior. By behavior, the cost is divided in four types. One is the fixed cost, variable cost, step fixed cost, and semi-variable cost. Fixed costs are the type of cost which it will not be changed with the level of activity. It means it is fixed for a range of activity. Suppose there is a classroom with, with 50 student capacity. If you have one student in that, you still need to pay a fixed rent for that. If you have two, still fixed rent, three, still fixed rent, and 10, still fixed rent. Even up to 50, there is a fixed amount of rent you are paying. That's why it's called fixed cost. But in variable cost, the, when the level of activity change, the level of cost will also increase. Suppose the lecturer of that class who received the per hour fee for the lecture, if he is teaching one hour, he will receive $100. If it's increased two hours, he will receive 200 Three hours, he will increase, his salary will increase to $300. So by the level of activity increase, there will be an increase in his salary as well. That's why it's called variable cost. We have another category which is called step fixed cost. You remember when the class reached to 50 students, there is no capacity for further more students in that class. So if the level of student increased to 51, 55, or 70, I need another class. And it will be a shift meant to another fixed cost another range of activity there is a need for another classroom with a fixed payment that's why up to a range of activity there will be a fixed cost another range of activity there will be increase in fixed cost and it's why called step fixed cost for semi variable cost some of the costs are made up of both fixed costs and variable costs. Suppose of a telephone line you have at your home that it have a fixed charges of $100 per month. And for each minute you are talking, you need to pay $1 for that. The fixed charge can be considered a fixed cost, but Per unit, per minute of the time you're spending is considered a variable cost. But all together with a bill will come to you at the end of the month. That's why it's called semi-variable cost. Of course, this, this video was a basic introduction to all these areas. We have a very detailed explanation about them. That what are these with the examples with detailed explanation of them, which will come in next videos. For more similar videos, kindly subscribe our channel, press the notification button, and share with your friends. Thank you.